women can have it their way. The man they're married to needs, bills, provides. They'd be happy being traditional wives, meaning she's able to live a soft life. But obviously when her husband gets home, dinner, when her kid gets home, lunch, she works if she wants to, not because she has to. If she wants to start a business, she can. If she gives birth, she can be home to nurse her kids. She can be there to raise her kids if she mm. doesn't have to hire a nanny or anything. Or how the current modern life it is now where they are, when women are just pretty much crushing it right now. I think women will choose how it is right now. Mark Manson, the author, he says that there's no way to have a problem-free life. So I'm going to paraphrase here. There's no way to have a problem-free life, but life is about choosing your preferred problem. So you're always going to have a problem. You just got to choose your preferred problem. So is your preferred problem to deal with a traditional husband and what comes along with that? Or is your preferred problem to not have a husband at all? Mm. You know, so it's everything comes with its own problem. And I think that most women would choose the preferred problem that they have now versus what it took. What's that preferred problem that they have now? Being, if if they see it as a problem, being single. If they see that as a problem, that's what I'm saying. Single, working, Mm -hmm. independent. I think they'll choose that over being a traditional wife to someone. then what do women want relationships for? Companionship, partnership, feelings-based things. That's what they want it for. Not but necessarily needs-based things. We yeah. established the needs things. But yeah. then my question is, if a woman has, I don't know, three sisters or mm-hmm. five cousins that are all our age mm-hmm. and acquaintances and friends, she has sisterhood. Yeah. Where she's getting her emotional, you know, she can talk to people. Mm-hmm. She's not just companionship and everything else. Yeah. There's that. Does the man she want mm-hmm. offer something else other than the physical what does she want the man for wants i didn't say need but what does she want the man for it's still the same thing companionship partnership someone you have fun with someone who you can laugh with it's the same thing i think what's happened is that we you know about the eight different types of love like eros love which is like romantic love philia i think is like friendship agape which is like universal unconditional love pragma practical love there's eight different types of I think it's eight. I don't remember exactly. I think what's happened is that the shortest lasting type of love is romantic love Mm. of all of them. Mm. Friendship love lasts longer. Uh, Universal love lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Pragma, practical love lasts longer. Mm. It's the shortest in duration is that romantic love. Mm -hmm. And what's happened, I think, is that we expect our partners to fulfill all eight types of love. So we want our Mm -hmm. partner to fulfill the romantic love, but forever. We want our partner to fulfill the friendship love, but forever. We want our partners to fulfill the unconditional use, universal love, but forever. We want our partners to fulfill that pragma, practical, pragmatic love, but forever. Mm-hmm. And we expect one person to be able to fulfill all those different love buckets that we have. Mm-hmm. That's just not possible. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Especially when we're talking about something like romantic love, that is the, sh- it's the most fleeting. It's not, it's of all the types of love. But yet yeah. we expect to be able to sustain that feeling forever. And it's humanly not possible. It's not something that has nothing to do with personality, character, who the person is, how hot or not hot they are. Their six pack has nothing to do with that. It's just not humanly possible to sustain that romantic love, head over heels feeling forever. And part of the reason for that is that it's very taxing on our bodies. 
Being in that state is very physically stressful and taxing on our system. So if we were to remain in that state long term, whether you believe in God or, or evolution, whatever it is that you believe in, God, evolution, universe, whatever term you want to use, mm -hmm. is smart enough to know that our systems cannot sustain this long term without wearing us down. But we've been conditioned and indoctrinated to believe that there's a way to make that last, that romantic love, that feeling that you feel in the beginning of a relationship yeah. last until forever. And yeah. it's, we just cannot do that because we are human beings. It's just not something that's possible. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have phases in and out of it. You mm -hmm. can definitely have phases in and out throughout your relationship. Mm -hmm. But this idea that we can sustain this, oh my God, I can't stop thinking about him. He's on my mind all day. Mm -hmm. When am I going to see him? Until mm -hmm. eternity mm -hmm. is just not possible because mm -hmm. you're not going to be very productive, right? Because what happens at the beginning of a relationship, you can't think about anything else. How are you going to think about your kids if you can't think about anything else but this person that you, you keep missing? Mm -hmm. How are you going to think about paying your bills and be able to stay mm -hmm. awake at work and not ruminate about this person until yeah. the end of time, until forever? Yeah. We cannot... So I mean, not, they, do, but no, they, no, but I mean, they don't. No, okay. When you first get in the relationship, you're not yeah. like, you don't function. People yeah, go to you school, become, No, you work. become less productive. You become less yeah. productive sure. because your mental, mm -hmm. your thoughts are so preoccupied with the thoughts of this person. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to do your homework or mm -hmm. study, mm -hmm. but you will recognize that I can't stop thinking about this person. You might mm -hmm. have to start reading the same sentence more because you just met this yeah. person. Then when you're not in a, mm -hmm. in a relationship, you might be able to sustain that focus a lot longer is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you just become this person in a hole somewhere. It's not what I'm saying yeah. at all. I'm saying it does impact productivity. Yeah. For example, people get into a new relationship, mm -hmm. they might call out to work often and not, they're not even thinking about, I might get fired, uh, right? It's not even, they're just so enthralled yeah. and fixated the on this person. Enthralled and wow. fixated on this person, they're not really thinking about the consequences of pushing everything else aside for that person. Wow. But we have this idea, we've been indoctrinated to think that there is some way for yeah. us to sustain this feeling until forever. Like one of the things that I was reading about, it was talking about how when we first get into a relationship that our serotonin levels decrease, they go down. Hmm. And if anybody knows about serotonin, that's what makes you feel happy yeah. and in a good mood. Hmm. And it goes down when you are in, new in a relationship. Hmm. So it's almost, it's almost like your body is saying, dopamine goes up, so you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And your serotonin goes down. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying, I feel all this pleasure, but I'm sad at the same time when they're not around. I feel all this pleasure and I'm with them and I'm sad when they're not around. So it's got, your system can't really sustain this until forever is what I'm saying. But we've been indoctrinated in our culture to think that this is what, if I, when I find the one, I'm going to feel like that and think like that until forever. That is a problem. And then what happens is, so then when novelty comes in, yeah, and then hot guy approaches her yeah. or, or maybe yeah. whatever, then it's like those feelings come back. Mm -hmm. and maybe I no longer feel this way about this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is what I'm missing. Exactly. Which in, is why the child. divorce rate goes up about 10% with every new marriage. First one is 50, second one is 60, third one is 70, and it keeps going up because, because we don't really want to accept that we are human beings. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame us because... TV, movies, it, it's, it paints this picture that when I find the one, mm. I'm going to feel like this Forever. rush mm. until the end of life. And it's just mm. not possible for any of us. Mm. Like I said, it doesn't mean that there aren't things that you can do to have phases of that and to mm. keep those feelings flowing. There absolutely can. But it's just going to be much more a conscious effort than it was in the beginning. That's why it seems so much easier in the beginning, because in the, in the beginning, it's not you controlling yourself, nor is it the other person controlling themselves. It's all the hormones, neurotransmitters, and all that stuff that's happening that's mm. actually controlling that, that bond yeah. in the beginning.